Hi, good morning. Lovely weather here in Bangalore. So those of you who live in Bangalore must be really enjoying it. And those who are not living in Bangalore must be feeling jealous of us. Anyway, don't you hear very often people making very casual remarks? Hey, that stupid fellow, he doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy just doesn't seem to grasp what a dunce he is. And the reverse of that. Hey, what an intelligent fellow. My God, he knows everything. He's a great guy. He's, you know, such a super sharp brain. We hear both these things straight from childhood. Among your classmates, among friends. All these, you know, very... Very, very easy and casual remarks are uh, made from time to time. And people think that they understand what is intelligence. Just because they get impressed by somebody, they think, oh, this guy is great. And just because they don't like somebody, they put him down and say, this fellow is a dunce. He is a stupid fellow. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know anything. All those, you know, uh, ways and uh, uh, how things go on. But... What we understand is that there are actually ways and means of analyzing and assessing a person's intelligence and capabilities. For a long time, people hardly did any work on that and it didn't have any significance for the simple reason that people had to you know, abide by whatever was their role in life. A ordinary fellows, a farmer's child could never aspire to become the thakur or landlord or king or general. So he knew that my role is over here. I may be the most intelligent farmer in my village or in the entire province, but I still have to do farming and farming only on the land which is available to me through my family. The carpenter's son became a carpenter. The priest's son became a um, priest. The barber's son became a barber. That's how life used to go on. So people would at most, you know, just praise somebody and say, oh, he's a wonderful barber or he's a stupid fellow. He doesn't know, but he's the only village barber. So it's okay. We'll, you know, get our hair cut done by him. In the last hundred years or so, people started migrating to cities. People started changing professions. You know, land holdings became too small for uh, uh, a huge family. So if a guy had four or eight uh, sons, all of them could not and their families could not survive on uh, the little land holdings. So they started moving out and looking for different vocations. And that is when this question came up. What is this person capable of? Now he migrates from the village to a town or a city. He's now looking for a livelihood. He wants a job. The question that comes up is, what are you capable of doing? The basic education till some time, till at least the British were here, would help us to understand, okay, this is a guy who has, you know, studied, he has done his matriculation, so he's a literate chap. No, he has done his higher secondary and intermediate, so he is more educated. Ah, he's a graduate, so he is amazing. He knows everything because he's a graduate. Like that, it used to go on. So once upon a time, people used to think that the qualification is a measure of the capability of the uh, person. Over a period of time, that started losing its significance. You may have a string of degrees, but you may not be actually capable of delivering goods or doing some good for the organization or the office and people wouldn't care. And slowly people started recruiting those who did not have the so-called very good high qualifications, but they were assets to the organization. That's how the change started coming in. So from the traditional IQ, which was developed about 100 years back, the intelligence quotient, it started off at Stanford um, uh, University, what they referred to as the uh, you know, Stanford Binet uh, uh, test. In India, we modified it and we call it the Kamath Binet, uh, Binet Kamath uh, uh, test. And then as long list of you know tools developed by which we could measure the intelligence and what intelligence were we um, uh, measuring the iq that is the cognitive intelligence the buddhi the ability of a mind to use his brain to 
ऑब्जर्व अंडरस्टैंड एनालाइज कॉन्सेंट्रेट एंड नॉट ओनली रिमेंबर बट पुट इट टू यूज फैंटेस्टिक दैट वेंट ऑन फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम and then once the it era came in people started realizing that most of the work that is being done by human beings is now being done by machines and computers and robots so what is it that people need what is the one thing that which is not likely to be taken over in the near future by machines computers and robots the consensus is human emotions no machine so far has shown any indicator that it can replicate human emotions so that is where this factor of today's topic that is eq comes into play the emotional quotient or even you can say ei that is emotional intelligence okay starting with daniel goleman in 1995 who came out with this path breaking book called emotional intelligence which became a runaway success 3 years later in 1998 he brought out a sequel which says working with emotional intelligence and that also became a success and people have taken it so seriously and have started practicing and implementing it in their day to day life to the extent that today behavioral scientists tell us that 80% or more of a person's success achievement fulfillment happiness depends on his eq and not on the iq iq is slowly fading away okay the good news is that while iq was inherited through the genes mostly it is debatable but mostly we do agree that a lot of the proportion of the iq is based on our genetics so i have inherited a certain iq from my genes eq is more of nurture rather than nature meaning to say it can be developed so that is the good news that we can celebrate that whatever may be my age whatever may be my gender whatever may be my educational qualifications whatever may be the work or the position that i am in now i can work towards improving and building up my emotional intelligence ensuring that i have a better future not only in terms of achievement and success but also in terms of fulfillment and happiness that is the good news and that is the reason why i selected this particular uh, topic today i'm sure many of you being people who are deep into understanding human behavior relationships all these things you have done sufficient work on eq many of you may be knowing more than me as far as uh, eq is concerned but i just wanted to bring it to a very basic level either for those of you who have not spent sufficient time in working on it or those who want to sharpen it further and look for ways and means how you can continue to sharpen your emotional intelligence help others to build up their emotional intelligence those are the things that i thought we will have a quick discussion on uh, um, now the basic uh, uh, thing to understand is let me also clear a myth you know when people say oh this fellow is too emotional oh this girl you know she's so emotional she keeps crying on the uh, time actually what we are saying is that personals persons emotion intelligence is low so please don't mistake these statements which people make very casually by saying oh this fellow is very emotional that fellow one is uh, you know hardly understands and is uh, very very sentimental those sort of things actually indicate low emotional intelligence and a lot can be done to improve it that is where the crux of it lies we owe it to ourselves our near and dear and to the coming generation to build better emotional intelligence and that can be done by certain very simple principles let me start off by telling you in a nutshell for most of you know it but just as a recap maybe for some of you 
what is this thing called emotional intelligence? According to Daniel Goleman and also so many others who have subsequently worked on fine-tuning it, it basically boils down to five parameters. You develop these five parameters or skills and your emotional intelligence is high and your EQ will record a very good score. Before that, let me also tell you that while measurement of IQ, as I told you, is almost 100 years back, I still feel that a person who is not uh, uh, you know, working on, on uh, good uh, uh, emotional uh, intelligence happens to be a person who will be left behind. So please be aware of the fact that we need to you know, work on it whether we like it or not. Do not treat it as something, oh, fine, okay, I'll see whenever it is. More than any other education, it is important for us to build our, it should be a continuous process which should go on, okay? So now let me tell you what this emotional intelligence that I've been talking about and these five parameters. Sunita has helped me, you know, put it in a nice little visual uh, uh, style. So we will now take up the first one. Yeah, here is Daniel Goldman's book. The first one, as you see on the left, is Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goldman. And he said, why it can matter more than IQ? In fact, it matters much, much, much more than IQ. This was 1995. More than 25 years have gone past. Then, as you see on the right, Daniel Goldman came out with the sequel, that is, working with emotional intelligence, applying emotional intelligence in your place of work. All these things uh, you know, happen. Okay. So I come to the five parameters or the five pillars of emotional intelligence. The first one is self-awareness. Am I aware of who I am, what I am, starting from my, uh, you know, uh, upbringing, my family, my cultures, my value systems, my education, my learning, my attitudes, moving on to the current. And that is, am I aware of my own emotions? Do I understand when there I am sad, whether I am feeling relaxed, whether I am feeling tense. That is the first pillar of emotional intelligence, unless and until we develop the skill of being aware of both the factors. The first one being that I am a person who has been through so many experiences right from my early childhood. I am what I am because of my entire life and whatever good, bad, ugly, whatever I've been through, whatever I've imbibed, whatever I've kept away from. And the second part of that is what I am feeling right now. Because I need not repeat, I'm sure you're all aware, all our actions are dependent on our emotions. The person who is aware of his emotions can deal with it much better. So train yourself, practice, put labels on emotions. Get a chart of emotions and put it up in front of you or in your mobile screensaver or something, whereby you have a huge list of emotions available to you. And periodically, do a simple little exercise of what am I feeling right now? What emotion am I going through right now? Am I angry? Or is it that I'm just irritated? There's a difference between anger and uh, irritation. Or I am so angry, I'm in a rage. You see the difference? People sometimes tend to just generalize. Haven't you come across people when you ask them, how are you? I'm good. I mean, you don't decide whether you're good or bad. I decide whether you're good or bad. But when I ask you, how are you? I'm expecting some sort of a little more in-depth answer that, yes, today I'm feeling very contented because I've just completed this project. 
but today I'm a little worried and anxious because my grandfather is not doing too uh, uh, well. Now that is what I call as self-awareness, being aware of emotions. Similarly, as I mentioned to you, am I also aware that no, I will not do this task because it goes against my basic principles. It goes against my value system. It goes against my attitudes. So awareness helps me to decide why I am doing particular actions, whether I want to do particular actions or not. Once I start becoming a little more, you know, capable of identifying my emotions, we move on to the second pillar, which is managing those emotions. When I'm feeling angry, what do I do? When I'm feeling irritated, what do I do? When I'm in a rage, what do I do? When I'm happy, what do I do? When I feel contented, what do I uh, do? How do I manage those emotions? How do I convert those emotions into action? And please remember, suppression of your emotions is not the right answer. In fact, it is wrong. Leelavati has asked, is less emotional means more practical, though not at all. Whether you are practical or not, or whatever you do, entirely depends on how well you are aware of your emotions and how well you can manage your emotions. The more we learn that, the more we are moving towards a better quality of life. So if I tell myself, I am feeling jealous because my neighbor got a new car and I can't afford it right now. I'm happy for my neighbor. He's my dear friend. I know he'll even give me lifts in his uh, uh, car. So there are so many positive emotions also going through my mind. I am happy. I am excited. I will get to ride in this car, which has got these, you know, newfangled things which my old car doesn't have. All those factors will come into play. I will enjoy it. I am happy. I am feeling good for him. But at the same time, I am feeling a little jealous. Am I really jealous, or am I envious? Look up the dictionary meaning of these two and try to understand the difference. It's not the same. So when I can understand that I am jealous of my neighbor, my ability to manage my emotions automatically improves. I need to also introspect and review. I remember last year when my neighbor bought a new car, I did have a pang of jealousy. How do I handle it? If I learn lessons, no, at that time, you know, I made some stupid remarks to him and I was a little sarcastic, which I think he felt very bad. And since then, my relationship with him has not been all that good. Okay, lesson learned. Now I'm not going to do that. Okay, that was the second pillar. Let's move on to the third pillar, which is motivation. The more motivated you are, the more inspired you are, the more positive you feel towards yourself, the more you will strive and you, the more you will achieve, very obviously. But motivation again has to be identified and worked on. Let's say I'm a working person. What motivates me to work? Is it the money? Is it the sense of belonging? Is it the status that I'm getting? Is it the long-term benefits that I will be able to get a pension and gratuity and I'll be able to have a relaxed old age? Is it because people look up to me and I can make better friends and I can socialize better if I'm working and I'm an important part of uh, society? There could be a hundred different reasons for motivation and motivation differs not only from person to person, but from time to time. When I first got a job, my strong motivator was to earn more and more money. But today my motivator is that I want to get this promotion and get into a responsible position and so that I will be recognized. Tomorrow my motivator can be that if I earn well, I will be able to help my children get a good education. Like that, the motivators keep changing, but we need to constantly work on ensuring that my motivation level is high. 
the greater my motivation level, the better I will automatically perform with the same capabilities. A motivated person actually performs beyond his normal capabilities. Start from children. A huge chunk of children are just not motivated to study. And yet we keep pushing, pushing, pushing them. If we can build up this third pillar of emotional intelligence, that is improve their motivation to study, you will see a wide difference. You won't have to teach them. They will learn by themselves. That is what the third pillar does. And with that, we move to the fourth pillar, which is empathy. The first three were focused on our own self. Self-awareness, management of emotions, and motivation. The fourth and fifth focus on other people and my relationship with them. So it starts with empathy. How well do I know the people around me? How much effort am I making to understand? and the behavior of people who I interact with on a regular basis. How much do I know what is going on in their minds? That is what is empathy. We very often, if our emotional intelligence is low, we very often react to what the person said or what the person did. Whereas, Empathy is this fantastic skill which helps us to understand why the person did that or why the person said that. The moment you understand why, you are in a far better position to deal with the person. It's like a doctor does not prescribe medicine based on the how high a temperature you have got or how severe your stomach ache is. The doctor wants to find out why you have temperature or why you have a stomach ache and then and then only the doctor can give you the right treatment right exactly the same thing works with the mind in order to build up good relationships we need to know from we need to develop the skill whereby i understand why a particular person behaves in a particular manner why a person says these statements why is it this person has these sort of mannerisms why is it that this person keeps changing from time to time and there's different behavior patterns? That is a skill called empathy, which is a very, very difficult one. But all you need to do is to practice, 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 and you will learn. Okay. That was the fourth one. The fifth and last pillar of emotional intelligence is actually a sum total of the four, which is social skills. Just to put it in a very lighthearted manner, my guru of management, Sharu Rangnekar, said, however good you are in your job, you may be highly qualified from the best of institutions. You may have studied hard. You may have had wonderful marks. You may have had a lot of good experience and exposure. And the work that you are doing today would be praised by everybody. This guy is amazing. He's the best in whatever that profession he does. He is outstanding compared to all his peers. Okay. So however good you are, you will realize that there is a boss sitting on your head. And funnily enough, quite often, the boss cannot do the work that you are doing. He doesn't have the same skills as you have. And yet he's the boss. What made him the boss when you have more skills than him? He has this fifth pillar of emotional intelligence. That is social skills. And you know how he manifests it? He knows how to get work done by you. That is what Sharu Rangnekar taught us. If a person knows how to get work done by others, he becomes a boss. And that comes out of this fifth pillar, which is emotional, I mean, uh, social skills. Now, all you need to do is to become aware that these are the five pillars which govern my happiness, achievement, fulfillment, all these factors. 
so what do i do to develop these uh, uh, things what are the factors that i need to keep in mind and what are the ways and means by which i can build on it today i'm not here to conduct a lesson on how to improve your emotional intelligence because it takes a lot of time and effort i have been doing it whenever people want i have been conducting workshops i will continue to do that next time we have a workshop on emotional intelligence we'll inform you well in advance those of you who want to spend sufficient time and energy and inclination towards sharpening your own emotional intelligence and then helping others sharpen their emotional intelligence or you know training people to uh, get into better uh, uh, aspects of uh, emotional intelligence now i will only make you aware today that if you do not continue to sharpen and build your emotional intelligence it is quite likely that you will not stay in one place you will move backwards you will lose whatever you have today you may say i have done so much work i have got so many qualifications i have got these capabilities and i have reached where i have please remember that if emotional intelligence is not added to your skills if you are not constantly building up and improving on your emotional intelligence there is a possibility that you will slip a lot of people who come to a, what we refer to as a midlife crisis and they find that they have become unemployable or they find that they are struggling with their work always upset irritated because things are never going right or they find that okay professionally i am doing well but in my close relationships i am developing a lot of irritants and cracks and what do i do about it the answer lies in this yes rina has asked the question do you think emotional intelligence will give us good friendship they will definitely do so rina because once you un- develop the skill of empathy as to why this person is saying whatever is or why this person is behaving that way you will be able to build better social relationship get better friendship that's only one aspect of it as i told you your work life will improve you will probably get more promotions or you will be able to work you know more efficiently you will find that relationships friendships like rina asked will be far uh, better and you will be able to uh, develop better uh, uh, friendships you will be more at peace within yourself you will be able to handle those ups and downs which are inevitable in life uh, no that somebody puts you down or some setback happens or sometimes even a major tragedy happens all these things you will be able to handle if you are constantly improving your emotional intelligence so far only very preliminary uh, uh, you know tests and tools have been developed for measure of emotional intelligence in a book that i have written a very brief book it doesn't compare anywhere to daniel goldman's but it sort of you know brings it down to the very basics and the practical level it's a very short book that i brought out in that i have given two exercises that you can do at least qualitatively to find out how good is your emotional intelligence and where you need to improve and i've given a third exercise in that which is that if you want to help assess a child for his or her emotional intelligence and help the child how do you go about doing that so for those of you who are interested you can get in touch with banjara office they will you know you can order this book called emotional intelligence it's very practical and uh, useful but today we will go into a very lively discussion i already see quite a few very nice and interesting questions that have already come in the chat box and i would definitely like to answer them as they say in the tv serials after the break
Ah, so happy day in uh, Panjara for us today. Uh, the DCS uh, four teams have, uh, you know, started and there is a lot of hustle bustle in the academy, students coming in and out, a lot of fun. Today we close admissions for DCS. Very happy to share that we have and, more than 150 students uh, who have enrolled this year for DCS and uh, their wonderful, uh, you know, uh, journey uh, into self-introspection, self-discovery, and of course, reaching out eventually to many others. So that's something uh, that's happening here. And uh, for those of you who have, uh, you know, missed out this year, of course, we'll open up admission again next year for the next June, July session. But in the meantime, if you want to still upscale yourself, we are going to be uh, coming up with a lot of online short term programs, right? But those are, again, they have a lot of personal touch with mentoring uh, sessions and, you know, smaller groups and discussions. You know, in Banjara, it is all about that. It's, again, that human touch, though, you know, even though you personally may not be coming to Banjara, but still we'll make sure that in all uh, of these programs, we have that, uh, you know, closeness, we have smaller groups, we have brainstorming, uh, reflections, introspection. So some of the programs which are coming up now, the next one which is coming up is the life skills program. So next week onwards, you will uh, find on our website and uh, the posters and other uh, places we'll uh, circulate. We'll start circulating the, uh, you know, the details of the program. Uh, so life skills is something that will be a four month online program. And uh, parallelly, we will also start. So this will start somewhere in uh, October end. And December, uh, we will start off with parallelly, a train the trainer program kind of a thing where you can also learn to become a trainer or improve on your presentation skills. Uh, and things like that. So these are two programs which are coming up uh, for people who want to get in depth into psychology, uh, into human behavior, more into uh, you know the theories. We are coming up with our psychotherapies uh, program called PGDP. So that is also starting in mid November. So yes, these are the programs. Some are four months uh, programs, some are six months, and in all these two three programs, there will be an element of uh, human touch through mentoring. So yes, look out for our uh, for the details. Check out our website and get in touch with us. And uh, of course, I need not uh, you know mention again. But yes, counseling is free. Anything that you want to come and discuss with us, that's there. Ali was talking about booklets. So yeah, just go to our website, check it out, just explore. There are lots of things we do in Banjara, and do reach out if you need any help and support. Now comes the interesting part. The first half I only keep doing talking and I'm not very happy doing that. I would rather listen than talk. And listening I can even do by the visual listening of what you are putting up in your uh, um, chat box. So let me just go up a little bit. I have missed out a few, uh, this thing. Um, Sri Ram is asking, will it develop a character of being non-judgmental? Not necessarily, Sri Ram. That's a skill by itself that you need to develop just because I have. But empathy will help me to understand why I need to be non-judgmental. It makes it easier. Surekha is asking, how do we strike a balance between emotional and logical states of uh, mind? See, the logical abilities are already there. The IQ or whatever you know uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, your uh, cognitive intelligence and buddhi and rationalization is already built into you. Now, what happens is that whenever you need to take a decision, for example, if you can use both sides of your uh, uh, brain, you evaluate it. Uh, this is what the, in life skills we call, uh, Seema was just telling you about our life skills program in that we teach you the balance between, for example, critical thinking and creative thinking. They complement each other. The same way emotional mind and the logical mind, they complement each other. The more you start giving emphasis to both of them and balancing them out, you can do uh, wonders. Balaji says, what percentage of emotional intelligence and logical reasoning contributes to an ideal solution? I wish I had numbers, Balaji. You know, even in IQ, 
there are these professionals who say your IQ is 104, your IQ is 122. I've not been very happy with that. It gives an indicator, but these numbers, according to me, are you know sometimes misleading. So when you ask me what percentage, I would say I don't know. But if you ask me what is the significance or importance of emotional intelligence and logical reasoning, I would say emotional intelligence overrides logical reasoning. Logical reasoning is very easy. If you can't do it, your computer or your data bank and data sciences and all these things will do for you. Robots can do it for you. And that is why you need to focus more on the emotional intelligence. Okay. Lilavati says, will one take it as our weakness when we are emotional? Yes. If you are emotional in the sense that, you know, there's this person who breaks down and starts crying. There's this person who gets into depression. There's this person who is short tempered and loses his temper every now and then. Yes, it is a weakness. But the weakness is that you are not developing your emotional intelligence. You are not aware of your emotions and you have not learned how to manage your emotions. Once you do that, then people will not label you as an emotional uh, person. People will accept you as a person who is very balanced and very straightforward. That is what we need to you know, look into. Roshan says, after listening to your talk, I feel I have high EI and I can make others much older than me to work under me. When I was working in BST, I was only 25 years old when I was given the work of a senior secretary to handle staff under me. I was able to handle this very efficiently. I feel the five pillars that mentioned already in me. So I am successful and happy. Congratulations. Maybe you can keep spreading that word, Roshan. There are so many others who would like to learn from uh, you. Just explain how you did it, what you did, how, how you developed that, how you fought against negativity or negative influences. You will be able to spread the word around. Okay. Niti says, sometimes while expressing myself, I realize that my expression and uh, nagging or uh, complaint to the other person, though I am self-expressed, at times it backfires. Where do I draw the line? Yes, that's what I said, that all our actions, all our words are governed by our emotions, right? The more you take the trouble to become aware of your emotions, the better are the chances that you will say the right things and you will do the right uh, things, right? So start practicing on labeling. I told you, get yourself an emoticon chart, list out all the possible, even categorize them. Like I said, no, you say anger. There are 20 different variations of that emotion called anger. Am I aware of all of them? If I am aware, then I will be able to identify which is the one that I am experiencing right now. And then whatever I tell other people will be based on that. It makes it far easier for me to handle other uh, uh, people when this happens. Vinita says, do you think it's also good if you are able to convey early this to kids and they will understand how to manage exactly Vinita. This is what I've been telling constantly to those people who are parents, teachers, who are, you know, in whatever capacity they are influencing children or helping uh, children in their growth process, please start early. It is like any other skill. You s teach a small child how to do cycling. He picks up much better than if you try to teach a 40 year old how to learn cycling, isn't it? So the earlier you start, the better it is. Yes, Sima has said, thank you for being our ambassadors and helping to spread our message of empowering. I want to join hands with Sima and tell you, particularly on this occasion, when we have, you know, completed successfully our enrollments, registrations, going through the introspection and uh, awareness questionnaires, all that self-awareness, everything has been completed. And now we are smoothly proceeding with uh, the, uh, you know, DCS 22, as we call it, which is going to end in April uh, 2022. And we have you know, successfully overridden all those fears of the third wave and fourth wave, which was supposed to come in September, October. And here we are happily enjoying ourselves in the learning process. And these are simple factors which contribute to your emotional intelligence. Sudanshu says that's a very true fact about IQ that you mentioned that anyone can become a genius in the field they are working in simply because their potential to improve in their field can never really be measured. And that is where the downfall comes. In my years and years and years of observing people, I have seen innumerable people who have gone up the ladder. Because what happened is 
their IQ was high. They stood first in their class. They got admission in the best of colleges. They did well over there. They had good campus recruitment. They got excellent jobs. And because of their background and qualifications and you know, technical skills or whatever it is, they started going up. But at some point, they couldn't get along with people. They couldn't manage their emotions. They couldn't understand what motivates them. They could not empathize with others with the result that they went for a big you know, downfall. The pandemic has helped us to introspect a lot on what life can be. Please use that itself as, as a lesson that you know life cannot be as smooth and predictable as that. Day in and day out, I have students asking me only one question. Sir, tell me which career has got the maximum scope? What scope? COVID scope came and destroyed the scope of so many uh, uh, careers and pushed so many uh, careers further effect ahead, right? And whether we get, thankfully, hopefully, we are not going to get another uh, COVID type of uh, uh, issue. But there are going to be a lot of other issues in life. There are different types of tsunamis that are going to hit us from time to time. And the only way to handle them and tackle them is to sharpen your emotional intelligence and, of course, your life skills. Life skills and emotional intelligence, they go hand in hand, actually. They're very parallel to each other. I would, in fact, say that life skills is an expanded version of uh, you know, the uh, uh, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence takes us to a certain uh, point. <clears throat> For example, one of you asked me, no, does emotional intelligence help us to become more non-judgmental? Emotional intelligence per se may not help you, but developing life skills of which emotional intelligence is a very, very you know, significant pillar or a foundation of that will definitely help you to understand things like, why do I ne even need to be non-judgmental? Why can't I pass judgment and say, this fellow is stupid, that fellow is no good, that fellow is like this. What happens to me when I develop that type of attitude? This is part of self-awareness of emotional uh, intelligence, where I become aware. A simple thing like, since we mentioned judgmentalism, I am convinced that people who are judgmental who have this habit of labeling others, putting down others, questioning others, being critical of uh, others, looking only at the negative aspects of other people. They are headed towards the next big pandemic, which is already hitting us. The pandemic of loneliness. Pratima is asking how to identify or make a small child identify emotions. I've given a very simple questionnaire in my uh, book. You can ask for it and uh, start off with that. But more than that, as I told you, no five-year, six-year-old child is good enough. I told you, start with helping the child to identify emotions. Whenever the child is talking to you, Am I want to go out, but it is raining. Yes, because it is raining, you cannot go out. How do you feel about it? Do you feel disappointed? Do you feel angry why God had to send down the uh, rain when I want to go and play? Do you feel lonely that, you know, you're not able to be with your friends and you have to sit alone in your room? You start with a small child by helping the child identify his or her emotions. Here again, Sunita has brought out a very nice and a very cute chart. The type which you can use with maybe a child of five, six years. In fact, I wouldn't mind using this uh, uh, chart to understand my own emotions from time to time. But in this way, you can start helping the child. And once the child identifies the right emotion, take him into the next pillar. That is okay. You're feeling disappointed. You're feeling angry. What are you going to do about it? How do you manage disappointment? How do you manage anger? That sort of thing. Yasmin says that I used to be an emotional fool before joining DCS at Bandara. I now learn to take charge and manage my emotions because I have understood how to label my emotions. Hearty congratulations, Yasmin. You have done that in a very short span. And I really must congratulate you for uh, you know, achieving so much in just these few days and weeks that uh, you have started this new journey. And if you keep up that attitude, the learning goes on. 
the development of emotional intelligence goes on. The improvement of the quality of life goes on. Those of you who have done or are doing programs like DCS, it's just a one year. One year just zooms off. Before you know it, it is over. But it leaves you with a certain journey. It leaves you with a certain you know, process by which you keep on and on and on developing. The momentum has started to use the great Dr. Abdul Kalam's rocket language. You know, minds have to be ignited like a rocket is ignited and the rocket just keeps going. Our aim, and I want all of you to join hands with us uh, in uh, uh, this, is to give that right ignition from time to time. Renu says, like IQ, you cannot evaluate EQ. I do, to a great extent, agree with Renu that we have not yet been able to come with any standardized and globally accepted uh, you know, assessment tools for EQ. But that does not mean that we cannot identify, as I told you, these couple of tests that I have uh, put into the uh, book on emotional intelligence, there are many more. But I would like you to use them as qualitative assessment, not as quantitative assessment. Don't go by numbers, please. But it does help. You want to assess your own self. You want to help somebody else assess. Go through some of these good, you know, very balanced and very rational, uh, you know, testing processes. And you will be able to identify. We do it on a regular basis over here. We do it with students who come for aptitude testing or career guidance. We do it with people who come to improve their relationships or to give a better direction to their life. So we do assess. Uh, we have our own tools. I've always believed in developing, modifying, constantly improving the tools that I use. So I don't use any standardized uh, tool. Also, my tools are different for people at different stages of life. I wouldn't like to administer what I give to a 16-year-old to a 60-year-old. Uh, but it can be done. You will definitely get qualitative idea once you start building up that capacity and the ability to you know, uh, uh, use good EQ measurement uh, uh, tests. Kerali says, how do we help our children with special needs to express their emotions? Some children often express only anger. Yes, I have also observed that in a small way, Kerali, that when a child has special needs, his communication comes down firstly. Secondly, people don't give him opportunities. His own peer group, they would rather play with themselves. They would rather not play with this person. If this person cannot express freely, then they lose their patience and they say, stupid fellow, we don't know what he's talking about and they start ignoring him. Now, when you say that these type of children with special needs express only anger, what else can they express is my question to all the adults. Please understand any child with any type of special needs. It could be a child with intellectual disability. It could be a child who's got cerebral palsy, what we refer to as uh, spastics. It could be an autistic child. It could be a child who has gone through emotional trauma. It could be a child who's thoroughly put off by the online education and learning that is going on and lost motivation and is getting very poor uh, marks and is getting very frustrated. Even that is a child with special needs. The more we can help them to express. Give them little hints. Like I told you, start with emotion words. Are you feeling very irritated because you are not enjoying the online classes? Do you feel a sense of uh, frustration? Do you feel that depression that, you know, I may not be able to? Are you becoming hopeless? Anything of that. Uh, um, Renu says robots work on IQ, so humans can be a challenge for robots through <laughs> EQ. Yeah. We are not there to challenge robots because thankfully and hopefully they are going to be our slaves and not our masters, as they show in some of the science fiction uh, uh, movies. But yes. I do agree that, you know, while all the aspects of IQ are taken over and are being taken over by not only robots, but machine learning, Internet of Things, virtual reality, data sciences, all these are amazing tools that have come up in the last few years, which are taking care of all the skills which people required IQ in order to excel. And that is why the significance and importance of EQ is going to constantly increase. 
Surekha says, how do we strike a balance between emotional? Yes, I've already answered that uh, um, question. As I said, the logical mind is always there. We need to keep working on more and more of the emotional uh, part. Renu says, being empathetic towards children makes us easy to make them understand EQ. 100% I agree with you. That is what a child needs. A child needs somebody who stops just giving them lectures and telling them what to do and scolding them and correcting them. The child needs somebody who understands uh, uh, him or her. The child needs that love and affection which gives the child what we refer to as emotional security. Sita is asking about the online diploma admission. Please get in touch with either our website or the phone number of uh, Seema has been given. You can uh, uh, call her up. She'll give you all the details of all the various online programs that we are doing and then you can decide if anything is suitable uh, to you okay now what i am talking uh, about and what i am emphasizing uh, uh, on yeah venu says many of the top universities give equal importance to eq when selecting the students remember that western countries they don't have these uh, things like cet and jee where millions of people appear and then just by the stroke of you know, one mark more and half a mark less, they get selected into this thing. More and more Western universities are using methods by which they understand the motivation levels, the commitment levels, the inclination, the aptitude, rather than just be basically how high the marks that they got. Divya says, I was emotionally very weak, but after joining DCS, I feel and recognize myself how I have improved emotionally or sadness or depression and now have improved my emotions towards happiness and have a goal to achieve something in counseling. Yes, best of luck, Divya. I am sure with that attitude, you will be able to do it. And we are there to back you uh, up. Balaji says, maturity mentally has got a significant role in striking the right balance between EQ and IQ. And mastering it is a very significant part of having a great life, especially in these type of post-pandemic. Yes, I keep coming back to that one aspect that the pandemic should be a wake-up call to us more than the unfortunate losses that some of us have suffered. We have had deaths, but please remember, we were always having deaths of loved ones. The numbers of people who died by COVID is nowhere in comparison to the people who die of heart attack or cancer or suicide or traffic accidents. You put them together. And they are a huge number. And we do keep losing people to those other causes of death also. But other than that, I think this should be a wake-up call for us to say that there is a good scope in this. Or there is no such thing as, you know, this field is superior to that uh, uh, field. Or there is no such thing as once I qualify myself in this, till I retire, I'm going to be a very successful person. Those days have gone long back, but people were not willing to listen when people like me used to tell them uh, these things. And at least now that you have seen how the pandemic, the lockdowns, whatever you want to call it, how they have shaken up society, they've shaken up families, they've shaken up your way of thinking, at least use that as a means to understand that we need to introspect. We need to give a better direction to our life. And what better than to improve emotional intelligence? Overall, you will be taking care not only of your current needs and challenges, but you will be strengthening yourself in future to be able to handle any challenge that comes. And many challenges will come whether you like it or not. Life is becoming more and more unpredictable. You know that change is the only constant in life. But I also want to point out that the rate of change is getting faster and faster and faster compared to the previous generations. So the people who are going to be able to handle life most successfully are the people who can adapt to change people who can welcome change and people who can anticipate change. Please keep this third factor in your mind. 
are you able to anticipate what change will come in? What will be the outcome of this pandemic? What will happen next year if schools reopen? What will happen if schools don't reopen? What will happen to children who say that, no, I want to continue online classes. I don't want to go to school. What will happen to anybody like that? All sorts of new changes, developments, many of them unpredictable are going to continuously keep coming. And it is up to us to be able to handle uh, uh, them. And if we can do those things, we are going to be very happy and very fulfilled people. We are going to have very harmonious relationships with our near and dear, which I consider to be an extremely important uh, factor more than anything else. Taking all this into account, I have a sincere request to you before we sign off today's uh, session. And that is, please understand that whatever I've told you, whatever I can tell you, even if this one hour session is expanded to 10 hours, more important than that is to pick up some very basic, very simple aspects of emotional intelligence and making it a, a regular practice. I told you a simple thing like just stopping your thinking process for a moment and saying, what am I feeling right now? And don't dismiss it by saying, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling OK. I'm not feeling anything in particular. That is not true. Feelings, emotions are going on in your mind 24 by 7. Are you in a position to identify those feelings? And as I said, it's not rocket science. It is not very difficult. You keep practicing on it. Once, twice, ten times, hundred times, it becomes second nature to you. It becomes so easy and so simple that you don't even have to put in efforts. The process of your constantly sharpening and improving on your emotional intelligence. And once you start seeing the results, that's something really fantastic. I have seen the greatest motivator for a person to take up some skill or to do certain activity is to see the result. We are all result oriented. So when I see that result, when I see that my relationship with one or two of my near ones has improved, when I realize that I can tackle my own emotions when somebody is nasty to me, now I'm in a better position to handle than I used to be like a few of our BCS students said so. I also want to make it clear that we did not pay them to come and uh, uh, mention this, okay? This was a very spontaneous thing and I really thank them uh, for it with all humility and appreciation but constantly we keep getting this feedback and that believe me is such a great blessing for us it's such a great motivator to us whenever a student tells us that this is how I have gained in my life this is what I have sharpened the skill this is what I have developed by you know whatever I'm doing whether it is through the DCS program or any of our online programs that we have or anything you can learn anywhere, you can read books, you can do so many other ways of doing it. You can be in good company of people whose emotional intelligence is high. That is something that I would definitely like you to uh, do. If I says thank you for such a refreshing discussion, I'm in the process of unlearning and learning, looking forward to learn more in Manjara Academy, feeling lucky to join DCS. And this comes from a person who is qualified with her doctorate from one of the top national universities in India. So I think it really, you know, humbles us and makes us feel very nice uh, that, uh, you know, there is this type of appreciation which is coming in and we will definitely keep doing whatever best we can. And as Balaji said, mostly we as humanity react, sometimes overreact and judge quickly without putting ourselves in the other person's shoes. The answer to that is very simple. Stop reacting and start responding start today start right now as the clock strikes noon have a wonderful saturday have a wonderful weekend and have a wonderful life ahead of you 
बाय बाय एंड जय हिंद